majored in broadcasting in college and in my senior level classes, we had to rent out these giant heavy news cameras, like the kind that sit on your shoulder and go out on campus and shoot news stories, edit them together, and then we were graded on it. And there were some very simple things I learned in these classes that are just rules of thumb for making a video more polished and more interesting to the audience. And years later, I still incorporate these techniques into every video I make. So today I'm sharing them with you. And before I get started, thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring today's video. If you're referencing something, you need a visual of it. One of the first things we were taught is if you're talking about something, you want a B-roll clip of whatever that is overlaid on the video. B-roll is supplemental footage to your primary video. So like when you're watching a news story and they're saying something like, it's time to break out the shovels and scrapers thanks to a snowstorm that rolled in overnight. The plows are out clearing roadways and residents should anticipate a longer commute this morning. That's much more interesting to listen to when there's clips on screen of what I'm talking about. The car covered in snow, the plow, the commuters. And that goes for any type of video. If you're reviewing a piece of gear, you're talking about a backpack and how nice the zippers are. Show a clip of those zippers while you're talking about how great the zippers are. If you're vlogging and you're like, hey, I'm here in New York City, show a B-roll clip of the streets of New York. B-roll clips rarely need longer than three seconds on screen. Once you've seen something for three seconds, you've seen it longer than three seconds and it becomes a drag. I personally usually cut my B-roll clips closer to two seconds because I sometimes find three seconds to be a drag. Unless it's a shot that you need more time to show something really interesting, like a really cool weaving drone shot. But if it's like a shot of a sign, a shot of a building, three seconds is the max. When it's longer, you start to lose audience attention. People get bored. It's better to overshoot than undershoot. As everyone who's ever made videos knows, when you first start out, you tend to undershoot. As in, you don't usually shoot enough B-roll to cover the video that you're making. So you usually just end up using super long B-roll clips, like a 10 second shot of a sign, which is really boring for the viewers. So now when I'm out shooting, I always shoot a little or sometimes a lot over what I think I'm going to need. Because once I get home and start editing, if I find out I don't have enough supplemental footage to keep the video interesting, I can't just run back out and get more shots. However, if you do need more shots, today's sponsor Storyblocks has you covered. Storyblocks has a library of over a million high quality stock assets, including 4K footage, music, images, sound effects, and more. And they have an unlimited all access plan. And for a low monthly cost, you can download anything in their library and it's yours to keep forever. And you can use the downloaded content anywhere for personal or commercial use. So if you find out you've undershot for a video or you need a B-roll clip of something that you just don't have, it's super easy to just download one and add it in. So definitely check out Storyblocks. It is so useful and I will have a link down in the description. Okay, next up on my list is don't use the same clip twice. This is usually another byproduct of undershooting, but you don't wanna bounce from B-roll clip A to B to C and then show A again because you're out of clips to show. So you just throw that one back in. In school, we would have to show our news videos that we shot in front of the class. Like we would watch everyone's all together and the professor would just kind of like shout out critiques of them as they were playing. And I very clearly remember him yelling out for pretty much everybody's videos at the start. I've already seen that shot. I don't wanna see that shot again because we all were under shooting and these videos had to be between two and three minutes and we only had like a minute and a half of footage. So we'd just start recycling footage to get there. I do sometimes break this rule in my travel videos. Like when I do the opening montage, I'll like throw some stuff in that I'll maybe show a longer clip of later. But just generally speaking, you should have enough supplemental footage that you don't have to use the same shot twice. Don't stack panning clips together. A panning shot is when the camera is pivoting from a fixed position. So kind of like if it's on a tripod and it's moving like left to right, like it's sweeping a scene or it's moving up and down. And generally speaking, you don't wanna jump from one panning shot to another panning shot to another panning shot because it starts to feel kind of dizzy for the viewer. It's usually better to go from a panning shot to a shot that's more still and then to another panning shot. And of course there are exceptions to this and everything else I'm talking about in this video. Like if you're doing a cool transition, you're probably gonna go from like a panning shot to a panning shot, you know? But generally speaking, if every clip is the camera swinging in some direction, it's not going to be as nice for the viewer to watch. Switch up your zoom lengths. Going from a wide shot 
to a wide shot to another wide shot is less interesting for the viewer. We're going from a wide shot, maybe a wide shot of a landscape, and then jumping to a zoomed in detailed shot, maybe of a flower, and then back out to another wider shot is just more engaging. So I always try to get a good mix of shots at different focal lengths showing different amounts of detail. Stop recording hot audio. When audio is hot, it's so loud that it's distorting. It's called clipping. We've all heard it. It's super unpleasant. And the way you can tell if your audio levels are too high is if the level bar is hitting the red section. And the problem with hot audio is it can't really be corrected in post. It's kind of like a super overexposed image. So watch your levels, test them out before you hit record. I can watch my levels right here on my monitor that I have on my desk. The mic I use has an auto feature. It's the Sony ECMB1M, I think it's called. So I don't actually have to watch my levels that closely. It does a lot of the work for me, but just make sure you're not hitting the red and you're good to go. Background audio shouldn't compete with your primary audio. There's a music track in the background of this video, but at no point during this video have you been distracted by it. At least I hope not. If you're listening to the music, you're not listening to the voice. And I think we've all clicked on videos before where the background music is so loud and distracting that you can't pay attention to what the person is saying and you just end up clicking off. The general rule of thumb that I use for my videos, and I say for my videos because sound mixing is so complex depending on what types of effects you're using, music, foley. It's a very complex thing and I know relatively little about it, but just the simple trick that I use for myself is I try to keep any music or background tracks 20 decibels lower than my voice. So when I'm editing, if I'm on screen talking, I look at where my voice is hitting and I try to keep my music about 20 decibels below that. And it does vary depending on how punchy the song is. Like if the song has a lot of drums or bass, sometimes I drop it even lower. If it's like a softer song, I'll maybe raise it a little bit. So if you're making videos like this, that would be my recommendation for just a place to start playing around with your levels. So those are some very simple rules and techniques that I've implemented into pretty much every video I've shot in the last decade. These really are such easy things to do. And I think they really do make videos look more polished. And if you look at news stories or TV shows or films, you will notice some of these things. So I hope that this was helpful for some of you. And if you make videos and there are any rules that you live by, let us all know what they are down in the comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you know when new videos are posted. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.